Welcome to part three of our Revit tutorial series where we're creating a tiny home design utilizing Revit 2025 for civil engineering and architecture. In the previous two videos we've covered how to work within the Revit interface, look at some setting changes, as well as create walls, floors, and a roof for our tiny home design. We're going to start off this video by making a custom wall type that doesn't exist in our Revit interface in our Revit library. So right now I'm going to go ahead and select this front wall just for an example and anytime we go to our type selector these are all preloaded walls that exist within the Revit library and so what we want to do is Revit will not allow us to overwrite existing settings for a preloaded wall in the library. We can however duplicate them and make some changes. So right now we're working with an exterior brick on wood stud and what we're going to change here is I'm going to go ahead and select edit type and if your menu like when you're taking a look at this your menu may pop in like this at the moment and if you need to expand it you can always grab the corner and kind of open it up a little bit more but mainly the preview button needs to be shown and it'll show you a floor plan view to be able to see that happen and you're going to be able to see that here is our uh, the top down view with the brick and the way I'm going to kind of look at this is I'm going to go ahead and select duplicate because we cannot edit this one that we have but we're going to duplicate it and this one we're going to say exterior and I will actually want to change it we've got some horizontal siding but I will actually want to add in something let's go ahead and say exterior vertical wood siding on wood stud and go ahead and select OK. You're going to see when I do that the name is going to get put in here and I can go ahead and select edit. And right now if I expand this out just a little bit more you're going to see that here is the list on here's the exterior side which is matching for our preview so the first layer we have is the red is the brick it's that three and five eighths of an inch. We have an air layer of one inch, which is the white. We have plywood sheathing at a half an inch. That's this thin yellow layer. Softwood lumber at five and a half inches is this large yellow layer in there. And then we end up having a gypsum wallboard, which is the gray layer that we have shown there. For the most part, we're gonna keep a lot of the same layers. We're just gonna modify that exterior one. And so now that we've got our own custom named one, we can go ahead and kind of change that out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at in the, rather than having the brick common, I'm going to go ahead and select inside of this cell, and you're going to see a little button that has three, three uh, it has an ellipse, right? So the three dots. So I'm going to click on that, and what that does, that's going to open up my material browser. And again, I can kind of expand this just a little bit to make it look a little bit easier to find. And I can pick a new material. So I'm going to look for something like siding, or wood or anything like that and here they have siding clapboard and if I select it and take a look at the graphics panel you can see it's kind of got more of a horizontal if I check the appearance you can see it's a little bit more horizontal and even in that little preview so it's not exactly what I want but I could find something kind of somewhat close there's some wood shake so that's in there as well again not exactly what we're looking for we're wanting more vertical kind of siding to give this maybe more of a modern farmhouse kind of look but so I'm actually going to choose softwood lumber it's going to have the a lot of the siding is going to have very similar properties so I'm actually going to go ahead and go down here and say hey let's duplicate the material and the assets and so here we have softwood lumber I'm going to go to the identity tab and on the name I'm going to go ahead and change this to vertical wood siding and the description, I can go ahead and get rid of that or maybe just say wood siding, comma, vertical. It's going to be a wood classification. In my graphics panel, I can change what color that it looks like. The shading is going to be what it looks like in that shaded kind of visual style. So we'll see if I can find some in more in the appearance tab. And we can always come back as well as having a pattern. So the surface pattern, if I click inside of here, 
I can actually find that, hey, um, I can actually find a vertical pattern that I like, which I'm going to go ahead and choose the vertical and select OK. So what I'm going to end up doing here is I'm going to go over to the Appearance tab, and we have a picture here that it uses to pull from that. So actually I'm going to go ahead and go down here to what they call the Asset Browser. So this button right here is the Asset Browser. It's going to open up another little menu here, and it gives you an option of a lot of new images that you can pull from to kind of replace that. So let me go ahead and move this over just a little bit. I'm going to actually choose in the appearance library. I'll select it and I'm going to click the little arrow next to the folder to expand it. And I'm going to scroll down and find there's a siding section. And if I scroll through here I can see what kind of things that are in here. So for example, I see there's horizontal, gray, beige, white color siding. And then here's like metal panels and here's one that I like which is going to be either wood vertical white or vertical six inch white and so I'm gonna go ahead and choose actually the wood vertical white I can select it and if you click the little three the two little arrows here on the end it'll actually replace that out and here's what it looks like so here it's showing you the preview well, I want to take a look at what the six inch vertical looks like looks pretty similar and as far as that goes looks like it did change on the cube just a little bit but I like the, the wood vertical white. Once I have a picture that I like that's been put in here, I'm just going to go ahead and close the asset browser. And then what I might do is go back to this graphics tab and on the color, rather than have you know this kind of sand color, I might just pick white as the option, select OK, keep that surface pattern, and in the identity, I might say vertical wood siding, and maybe you know I can go ahead and add white in there and even add it into the name as far as the material so white vertical wood siding go ahead and select OK that is now gonna change you're gonna see this becomes white and I need to change the thickness so not three and five eighths probably gonna be more of a half an inch thickness for that siding and you're gonna see once I type that in see how the layer updates in the preview and so now, here's the other thing I can do, is I can delete this thermal air layer. So if I select the number two on the row and select delete, I can get rid of that air layer. We're gonna keep the plywood sheathing layer. For the softwood lumber, I'm actually gonna change the thickness. This is for five and a half, that would be with two by six framed uh, studs. We're gonna go ahead and go to three and a half, and that's gonna make it thinner, and now here's where you can kind of see that preview keep gypsum wallboard and everything else the same and I'm gonna go ahead and select OK so now I've made a new custom wall type and when I select OK this is what it's gonna look like on the outside so for this we can always kinda of take a look at that and here's the other cool thing about it is now if I select another wall if I select the type selector I'll be able to see that I've got that vertical wood siding on wood stud type and I can make all walls of my structure to match and have that vertical siding pattern so I'm going to select both of these by holding control click clicking both of them and then going ahead and changing over to vertical wood siding so this looks a little bit more you know kind of like kind of like what we would be kind of experiencing all right so as far as this goes now if I take a look at my floor plan I can see that all the walls are the same thickness I did make a little bit of a modification my 16 foot walls look good but this is set to 1111 so if I go ahead and select this wall notice how if I have this in a light canvas theme I can see this this dimension turn blue anytime the dimension turns blue that means I can change it so I can click on it type 12 hit enter and then I end up having the 12 foot back and everything is good. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the home button and now we're gonna have the proper constraints. The only thing we might wanna do is also check our flooring. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the floor and while we're here in the 3D view, I'm gonna go up here and notice how we have an option in the ribbon called edit boundary. I'm gonna edit the boundary and I'm gonna go ahead and move to that floor plan level. And what you're gonna end up seeing is that here 
it doesn't go all the way out to the outside edge. And that's okay because I'm actually going to change this level of detail down here in my visual panel to fine. And what we're looking for is now you're going to see two layers. One is the siding and one is the plywood. Well, the floor is just there to support the structure. So the outside edge of this is actually just the outside edges of the 2x4 framed walls. And then on the inside, this would be the opposite side of that. And then we get into the gypsum wallboard. So actually, we're looking really good. We're just going to make sure that all that is matching. And it is all the way around. So we're in good shape, actually. I'm going to go ahead and select the green check mark. And what it's going to look like, though, when I go into my 3D view, is it does look like that our, if I kind of turn this to the side, it does look like that our walls are kind of sticking over the edge of the floor. The other thing is, too, is like, hey, in a regular construction, we would not see, you know, we would not be able to see the edge of the floor like that. So we actually would extend the siding and the plywood layer down to cover up the end of the floor. So here's how we're going to make a change to that. I'm going to select that wall type. Go ahead and go into edit type. This time I'm going to go ahead and select under view. I'm going to change to the section. And if I'm inside of this menu, if I zoom in, I can kind of see, hey, there's those, there's those layers again. Here's the siding, here's the plywood, here's my wood stud layer, and here's my gypsum wallboard. So in order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and click on Edit Structure, and I'm going to go ahead and select Modify. And under Modify, I want to click the bottom line of the outer boundary. So again, this little thin line, and you're going to see there's a lock icon that pops up. I'm going to click on that to unlock it. I'm going to do the same thing for the plywood layer. Just those two. Okay, because we're just going to extend those two down. And once I have those unlocked, I'm just going to select OK. And I'm going to select OK one, once more. And here's what's going to happen. So now if I select my wall, if I have it selected, I have something over here in my properties palette, which is called base extension distance. And if I take a look at the thickness of my floor, my floor, if I select edit type on it, I can see the thickness of the floor is 10 and 3 quarters of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and just say OK, just so I can get that information. I'll select my front wall once more. And on this base extension, I have to make sure the negative goes first before that first zero. And then I'm going to type 10 space 3 slash 4. And then I'm going to go ahead and select apply. And now you're going to see, hey, there's our siding. That our siding and our plywood, they got extended down to cover the edge of the floor, which is what we're looking for. So we want to be able to see, you know, not be able to see that edge of the floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this wall. I'll rotate around, select this wall, rotate around and select this wall. And now, if I go into that base extension, I'm going to go ahead and type that same number again, negative, to make it go down, 10 and 3 fourths of an inch, click apply, and now I can see if I look all the way around my shed, I'm not going to have any of that floor kind of showing. Now it looks a little bit better, it looks a little bit more decorative. So that's one way that as you edit wall types and everything that you can kind of, number one, change the appearance, modify wall types, and kind of play around with making some of those different changes. All right, our next thing is, let's go ahead and move to our floor plan. And we're going to practice just placing doors and windows. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the architecture tab. And when we run a command, so like here, we're going to run the door command. Right now, by default, Here's our different types of doors. I'm actually just going to choose a single flush. We'll do a 36 by 84. And right now my cursor just has like the little circle with the slash across it to say that I can't place a door. So for example, these are always wall hosted. These are always hosted items. And so the wall is always has to be there. So once I get over a wall, I can see, hey, there's the door and how it pops in. And I can place where I want it once I have it. 
So I'm going to just click to place a door. I can flip the direction by using the arrows. So since this is more of a residential structure, so we're going to probably have it where that this one here looks like our dimensions kind of kind of uh, in a way here. Let me cancel to stop placing doors. And I can always pull this down. There we go. And now we can flip inside. You can choose whether it be a left swing or a right swing door and you can place where you want it to be. Okay, so if you don't like the doors, so like here if I select the door, if I don't like any of these, so I can always change the type as well. So if I don't like the single flush, I could change this over to a double glass. If I go into my 3D view, I can see what that looks like. So it just depends on what kind of door style that you like there. So again, if I even change it in the 3D view and go back to that single flush, I can see that door style being put in. And if I go to, the, usually what I like to do is in the floor plan, place all of your items and go from there. The other thing we're going to take a look at here is we're going to place windows. So if I go up here to window, here I can go ahead and I can change what type of window that I want. I'm going to go ahead and go down to a window uh, 30 by 46 double hung. And I can just do the same kind of thing. Go ahead and place the window. So again, the arrows to the outside indicate that's the outside of the window how it should be and I'm gonna go ahead and place just a few windows in around this building for right now cancel twice or escape or you can always cl click on the modify button but I'm gonna go ahead and move to that 3d view and you can see now the windows that are in there you can rotate around and see how you can now see inside of the structure and through it so that's the benefit of utilizing uh, windows and everything. Again, if you want to change windows, you can always select change to a different type and be able to see some of the, the different changes that you can make. All right, play around with, again, placing doors and windows into your structure. We will end up making some other changes and modifications as we need. And and in the next video, we'll look at how we can get even more options with a lot of our placed features like doors and windows.